Uh, welcome back everybody to part 2 of my Finish Cat 80% tutorial. So, last time we ended on getting the fire element, getting the heart, and getting out of here. Um, very, very, um, jumping down here is faster. Very, very important. Make sure you get the sword. If you don't get the sword, you'll need to climb Mount Colonel again. And it's unpleasant enough once in a run, you do not want to do it again. Anyways, once you get your sword, it's the white sword, I believe it's called. Or this is the regular white sword. And then it's like white sword, 12 minutes, white sword, 3 elements. Anyways, roll into the ladder. Roll into the ladder. Going down is much easier than going up. Um, using the Hina Posse is attempts. Dang, when did I attempt this a while ago? I want to say 9 frames faster than picking it up and throwing it, but it might be like 8 or 10 or something. Anyways, it's faster, do it. If you have the cane equipped. So one thing you definitely, 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 definitely want to make sure you do. Same thing as the sword, you don't want to forget this. Make sure you activate this wind portal. It's very important. Because or else you'll waste 45 seconds maybe later on the run. Uh, this guy always hits you. Well, always hits me anyways. That guy usually not, but... Anyway, 7 rolls. Then there's an Ezlo trigger, so don't walk into that. And we're back in Hyrule Castle. Um, you're gonna want to head up these stairs, and down these stairs. And I'm just going to speed up because I'm lazy. Anyways, Elemental Sanctuary. Roll. Um, you're going to want to go all the way up to the pedestal. Press the R button. Does it work? It might work. I'm not sure. Press the R button. And unfortunately, you can't skip this or this part. Um, but with the infused white sword, you can make clones of yourself. Pretty convenient. Used for most of the puzzles in this game. Anyways, one, two, three rolls, and charge up your sword. Hit one, two portals, hit both buttons. Pretty easy stuff. Two rolls, two rolls. And head on out of here. So eight rolls here, one roll, and you'll activate a body cutscene. He just teleports everywhere. There's only one section of the game where he actually walks, and that's right at the beginning. Anyways. This fight, there are two strats to it. One of them is the task strat where you charge up and you have to do it a bit earlier than that. Charge up and you're supposed to hit both of these guys twice. It's pretty hard. Real time strat, walk down, don't roll. Head a bit to the right, one, two, three slashes. That's all there is to it. So again, walk down, head a bit to the right, face up, one, two, three slashes. Um, I head a bit to the right just out of habit, you can do it straight like that, but sometimes you do hit his spear. Yeah. Anyways, another cutscene. Don't use speed ups again. Bad. Um, yeah. So with your newfound powers of splitting and making clones and all that, you will head back to where we originally got the bottle, um, which is down over here. Um, and you're going to split. I would recommend against breaking this grass because it's possible that you do get a drop that you don't want, like a kinstone or a mysterious shell. Anyways, push this block, go up, and head over here to another cutscene. This part is filled with cutscenes, unfortunately. Again, body doesn't walk here. <laughs> Um, so right here, uh, you're going to want to walk and you're going to have to read this sign. Reading the sign is very important. 
Um, anyways, let's say you're just terrible at this game and you actually break the sign. Whoops. What you're gonna do is you're gonna have to go all the way up here, enter here, and exit, and that's all you need to do. So either read the sign or do that. Does the sign respawn? It does. Interesting. You don't need to read the sign a second time though if um, you do go up there. Here, make sure you equip the bottle and make sure you grab water. Um, again, careful for the post ups and the guard apparently. Careful for the postman. I got lucky there. Usually he heads just to the left. Um, now, this is the third and final unskippable portal cutscene. Don't use speed ups in a run. Anyways. Talk to either of these minish, it doesn't matter, but this guy's the closest one. Then you're gonna press the A button. Make sure you don't mash A because if you do drop your water, you will need to get more water later. Okay, so you will want the shield, not the shield, the bombs and the cane of posse. That was terrible. Okay, so you're gonna have this in this equipped. Bombs, cane of posse, not the shield. <laughs> I don't know why I got the shield. Um, just careful you don't accidentally talk to this guard. And right here is another rule that you can do. Uh, hold down right. Didn't get it. Okay. This one's a bit tougher to get though. If you want, you can just place bomb and throw it. Then head right here. And right when it explodes, it hits the bottom rock and you don't get damaged. It's pretty fantastic. Or you can roll lift and sort of place it the same way. Anyways. Head over to Malam's house. Again, using the Cane of Posse is faster since it's equipped. Grab the Lon Lon key. You can actually get this key right at the beginning of the game after you get as low. Um, but it's actually about a minute slower. There's a page in it on it on um, Zelda speedruns, but... Anyways, don't do it. It's slow. Once you have the key, talk to Talon. Little interesting graphic thing here is Talon actually walks through the door, but Malon just disappears. I find that funny, Link walks through it. Full of information this tutorial. Anyways, back on the run. Um, sometimes the Octoroks do get in your way, but use the King of Posse here. Jump up. Don't shrink, you don't need it. Again, most of the important parts of this game to save time is optimizing movement. I would recommend watching the like top three runs and see what they do in what areas. So in uh, Minish Woods again, but this time on the northern parts, you're gonna head up these stairs and go to Syrup's Hut. This is where it's important to have 60 rupees. Um, I forgot to mention something earlier. Oh well. Okay, oh, yeah. grab the mushroom, talk to syrup, again R and A for this uh, text box. Okay, I completely forgot to mention this, but um, after getting into Lon Lon Ranch, there is a 50 rupee chest if you missed the one in King of Flames. Um, I'll just go show off where it is real quick. But normally you would just go up here and exit to the left here. The cave is, is it that one? Ooh, I forget. I think it is that cave right there. I'm gonna go check it out. As look, I've seen. Oh, it's not. Okay, it's a good thing I checked. Is there not a cave? Am I just completely crazy? I might be. Alright, first false alarm guys, I'm just crazy. I swear there's something though. I'll look into it. <laughs> Anyways, head back over here. Um And you're gonna go back to the shoe shops so now that you have the mushroom. Apparently it smells really bad and it will wake up anybody. Do not roll here because there isn't as low trigger. Uh so just go in front of this guy, press R. And he will give you the Pegasus boots. Eventually. And with this, we can continue.
So pause, equip the sword, equip boots. Uh, make sure you don't go straight in the middle for hitting the postman and the guard. But it's pretty easy. Roll, use boots. Uh, the moblins do one heart of damage if they hit you with their spear. Everything else is like a quarter heart. So right in front of you, there's a nice load trigger. You can just go right around it. Pretty fantastic. Make sure you don't hit the p hat. And we will be getting three uh, red kin golden kin stones. The first one is in this dungeon, I guess. Not dungeon. Mini cave. Um, so for the darkness strat, with the boots, it's pretty easy. What you're going to want to do, lure him towards you, hold A, slash slash, slash slash. Okay, I'm just going to try to hopefully get different RNG here. Nice. One, two, three, four, and he dashes at you. Those are his only two attacks, uh, so that's pretty good. Sometimes he drops a kinstone and you can't avoid it if he dashes towards you, but those are really only strats for that enemy. Anyways, uh, take the upper path and go down the vines, and you're gonna head straight left to get the next item on our list. You're gonna have to shrink first. Um, another lily pad segment. This one's pretty easy though. Just a quick um, dust jar over boots. Gust jar a few times up. Uh, twice to the left, and then keep on going up. If you move to the right a bit, you actually go slightly faster. Do it if you want. Saves a bit of frames, so why not? Um, anyways. Enter here. This is where you get the bone arrow. You're going to want to kill all these guys. They are really random, and they do half hard damage if they hit you. Make sure you don't die. Let's just do that again, because that was sort of sad. Nice, that hurt. Okay, that was much better. If you're really low on health, you can use a bomb to death warp here. If not, just equip the boots, equip the bow, and save. And again, A, B, start, and select to um, reset. I don't think I mentioned that in the last video. Um, again, don't walk into the Ezel trigger, roll down, run, 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 and hit up the first set of butt. Head up the first set of vines. Uh, run up, run to the right, and roll. Here, if you roll straight right, you're gonna hit an Ezel trigger. You can roll a bit to, uh, you can go a bit left and then roll, and you'll be fine. Um, so there are two strats here. One of them involves taking damage and is faster. Goes like this. The other one involves not taking damage, is safer and slightly slower. Roll through him and keep on going. And then you just head left and head up into this cave to collect the second of three golden kinstones. Uh, roll, use boots, push the rock. This part's pretty fun because it's not very linear. But um, again, this is the fastest route to do it. Oops, meant to use the bow. We'll pass this guy, you don't need to use the boots, not worth taking the damage. Oops, again, don't hold, that's the same thing as the white things in um, on Mount Krennel. We'll pass this guy. And you'll need to equip your sword, It's since you say warped, it's the first, um, it's what your cursor is on right now, so that's convenient. Head over here. If you did not get water earlier, get it here. Um, I guess you could get it later, but just get it here for ease. Oh, it's nice. You don't need to hit this wind portal, you only need to hit the one in Harold Town. Anyways, now that you have all three Golden Kin Stones, you fuse with these guys. So one down in this one. Um, this is assuming that you didn't get any green or blue other Kin Stones. Um, you actually have one frame to move here, I missed it, but it saves a frame, so why not? Uh, the bottom one this time, with the middle guy. Shoot. And L button, not R. The bottom one again. Uh, 
and head on down. Okay. Alright, next part. Roll, 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 roll. Lots of rolling here, and boots usage. Roll past these guys, it's not that precise. Again, rolling past enemies does take practice, but it's not that precise. Bit of getting used to. Um, don't roll here when you go to hit the switch, but you can't roll out, that's the fastest way of doing these rooms. Okay, so in this next part, you have to kill three tech tights. Uh, what I like to do that's pretty consistent, roll up, hold left, slash once, slash twice. Pretty easy. Just one more time. Roll up, hold left, slash once, slash twice. Yeah. But yeah, you just need to kill all three of them to activate this next part. Over here, what you're going to want to do before shrinking, you're going to want to cut this grass, kill this rope, and cut this grass. Uh, ropes are snakes, by the way, that's the names that they're given. If you're not aware. And head over here, that's the fastest way to get to this guy. Slash. Roll out. Roll, 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 roll. Make sure you don't get hit by these guys, and head down here. Now this part, instead of activating one, you're going to deactivate one. Um, this guy will run um, right here if you try to get too close to him, and there's absolutely no way to get past it that we know of. So just deactivate him and keep going. And this part you will need to kill all the enemies. So kill this first rope, head on over here, kill these second and third ropes, and then there's two enemies under the rocks. Um, you gotta be pretty close to them. If you're too far, you're not gonna do anything. If you get too close, you will be knocked back. So it is pretty precise, but oops, I even missed it there. With practice, it's generally easy. Okay, so what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to like hug this wall, and then after the screen transition, just hold right uh, with the boot, so it looks like this. And you shouldn't bonk. If you do, not the end of the world. But we are now in Wind Ruins. And this is where... I'll just save state here. This is the first major um, route deviation between the Japanese and European version and the North American version. Um, I'll start with the Japanese and European version once and then I'll do the North American route. But yeah, I'll put annotations or something to skip in front to depending on which version you want to use. So let's start with the Japanese and European route. Oops. One, two, three. Go up here. As low trigger. So what you want to you, what you're going to want to do here is hold down right, and then you're gonna roll past the zappy thingy. Kill this guy with the skull. Um, for skull children, the skeletons. Oops. If you throw something at them, they die in one hit. So keep that in mind. Pots, skulls, bombs, whatever. Sometimes if fast enough, you can roll past that guy, but I wasn't, which is unfortunate. Anyways, you're gonna head up here, roll past this guy. Here, make sure you slash the skulls. Once they start um, hovering, it won't work if they're still shaking on the ground. Uh, you're gonna grab this skull, activate this guy, hit, that does 2 damage, 3, 4 damage, and keep on holding B to charge up your spin attack. You don't actually need to go where this skull is, um, just the one beside it is fine. As long as the first switch you step on is the clone switch, and then you go here, and the door opens up. Easy as that. Anyways. I am terrible. Don't do that. Okay, let's pretend I just didn't do that. Once you get from the last portal, you're gonna roll, roll, roll. Activate this guy. I do that in runs as well, it's just <laughs> make sure you don't do that. Activate the Armos. Very important. You can slash him once, hopefully he gets out of the way. If not, again, he takes 4 hits to kill. Drop the first key, uh, Ezlo talks to you. Uh, you can roll into the key if you want, just to save it for the time. And 1, 2, 3 rolls if you don't miss any. 
If you need hearts, one in this skull, one in that skull. I'll grab one just in case. Um, then you're gonna want to equip the bow over the boots. Blow past the Armos, blow past these guys, and use your key on the left door, not the right door. Very important. Um, so roll up here, roll, hit the first eye switch, roll down, hit the second eye switch, equip the boots. And here's another Armos fight. Um, same thing as last time, I got a charge, so that's really good. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I should have rolled towards the door. Roll towards the spikes, roll towards the switch, roll past the spikes. If you only get hit twice, that's good. Um, I would recommend grabbing a heart and bombs here. Bombs then a heart. Because you will need bombs coming up. If you don't want to, you don't have to though, it's optional. Anyways. Blow up this door. If you want to take damage, you can. It's also possible, I didn't show it off though. If you place the bomb like right here, it's gonna explode and you can just walk past the door um, as it explodes. It won't hit you, but it will hit the door. Grab the moments, equip the moments, and save warp. AB start select. And you will head back um, towards this door. So again, hold down right. This time you don't need to pull the switch. You can hold down left if you want. And since you have the moments, a little shortcut. So why not? Make sure you get this treasure chest. It contains a red pin stone that you will need for later. Um, oops. Don't do that. It's possible that you do get a red pin stone from one of the um, Armos. Make sure it's the the sideways W. It's the same shape as the pin stone that drops on the ground, essentially. Um, if you do get that, then skip this treasure chest. Go straight up, because the door is already open. This time you don't need to activate the Armos. <laughs> um, so this next trick coming up is... fairly difficult. It definitely takes a lot of getting used to. So. What you're going to want to do, you're going to want to place a bomb right here, and you're going to do a trick called portal items. What portal items does is that it lets you use items on portals. So let's say I equip, start with these two. Oops, didn't do it there. Why oh, does it not work with sword? I thought it did. Works with King of Cross that I know. There you go. Sword looks like that. Um, you can do it with the bow. Yeah. Um, you have bombs and moments equipped. Anyways, you will do it with the moments. Use them, you'll pop right up here. Now what you're going to want to do with the bomb that you had placed, um, it's barely tight timing, you're going to have to hold up and have the bomb explode right as you're landing right there. So, let's try it out. Also, very important, this trick is sub-pixel dependent, um, if you don't know what it means, it's basically, like just because I'm standing in one position, if I move around a bit and I go back to the exact same position, my sub-pixels might be different. That was a really bad explanation, but what you want to make sure you do is you don't want to just um, do the portal items glitch right in the middle. I will explain that later. You don't just want to do the portal items glitch right in the middle because it's possible that you do miss it. You will want to do it like right in the top corner here when you start holding right. So what you do, you're going to walk and do this frame by frame. Upright. When Link is pushing, you're gonna press B, and then you're gonna start holding right. And I got the slow animation again, because I can't do frame events apparently. Anyways, if you start holding right too early, Link actually has to be pushing on the portal for it to work, and you actually need to use the moments. I'm terrible at this. I can't even do it wrong if I try. There. If you do it too, if you start holding right too fast, this will happen. It's very slow. Make sure it doesn't happen. Um, also, this trick, portal items, is patched in the North American version, so that's why um, the routes are different. But anyways, hold up right. Timing is, gets 
timing takes a bit of while. I can speak English. Timing takes a bit of while to get used to, um, but it's pretty easy. Now the second part is the damage boost up. I'm just gonna save one more time. You're gonna want to place the bomb. Make sure you're actually facing up because if you pick up the bomb, let's say, and you throw it, it's not gonna be it. Okay, so bomb like that, or bomb like that. That does make quite a big difference. So you want to place the bomb in up to the left or the right so that you can actually see it. Portal items. So I'm just going to go frame by frame here. So what you want to do is you want to wait for the bomb to start shrinking or growing. So right here, start holding up. And I can't do frame again, apparently. Or maybe I was too low. That might have been it. Oops, that might have been late, but let's try it anyways. Start holding up. Nope. Okay, I'm just going to do it in real time. It's easier. And not embarrass myself. I pause buffer this trick because I'm bad. There you go. Let's try to see actual frames this time. can't do it. I apologize for that. Anyways, when you start seeing the bomb shrinking and growing, that's when you're going to want to start holding up. Uh, make sure you do practice this trick a lot because it is tough. Now what I like to do, this might have been late, but I like to equip my next equips right here. Saves a pause. Don't do it if you're inconsistent at this glitch though because if you do fail it, you will have to go back here and do the glitch again. Anyways, as you just saw, once you're up here, um, your Z position, Z position, wherever you come from, is actually changed. So now you can like, you know, do funky stuff. Fun stuff. And what you will do is you will go straight to the boss. You need to, I'll just show this, if you go straight up, is this a soft lock? I think this one is a soft lock. Yeah. So the boss dies, and the game soft blocks. You can't move, can't pause, can't talk to Ezlo, can't fuse to the stones. Don't do that. You gotta head this way. Now, what you wanna make sure you don't do is you don't wanna go up. Because then, the boss doesn't die, but since you still have the, um, the effect of the Z coordinates changed, um, he's actually not going to be able to hit you, which is pretty fantastic. But you're not going to be able to hit him either. So make sure that doesn't happen. You also can't go straight to the next area, unfortunately. If that does happen though, then just go straight down. It's pretty cool because the boss music is playing. But anyways, what you're supposed to do, go this way. If you need health, grab it from one of these three skulls. Um, skulls are not affected by the height either, apparently. Um, and you're going to have to jump down this door. So again, if you were just up in the boss room, you can just go back down in this screen and then jump down the door and go here. And there you are at the boss. So I'll just take a minute to explain the English route, which is slightly longer. Um, then I'll go back to the boss. So again, annotations probably. So, English route starts off the exact same. Um, as low text right here. So you're gonna want to hold down right and then roll past the electric guy right here. Pick up the skull. When you throw something at a skull child, um, it dies in one hit. Can I do this? Dang. If you go fast enough, you can roll past it before he gets back. So, anyways, they die in one hit though. So, pots, skulls, bombs, whatever. Uh, roll around this way. Oops. Now you want to make sure that these skulls are in the air, and then you slash them. Don't do what I just did, that was pretty terrible. Activate this guy, then one two more hits, if you hit him with the skull. Because the skull does two damage. Um, fuse in these two portals. Split areas, whatever you want to call them. Hit the first switch with the clone, second switch with normal link, and that works like that. Now you're gonna shrink. And this time you're going to activate the Armos. Compared to not activating him and just rolling past, which, I mean, 
Ugh, who would do that? Embarrassing. Uh, what you want to do is... Right here, you can activate him, slash him once, hopefully he moves out of the way. Or a bit of a safer strat is 1, 2, 3, 4 hits, and he dies. And hopefully he doesn't drop a kinstone on you. But that doesn't matter. So, um... Key drops, Ezlo talks to you, fall down. Roll. And now you're gonna hold right, use the boots, and you're gonna skip this door and go straight to this one. If you need hearts, two hearts right here. One, two. Go up these stairs. Roll. Roll. Use boots again. Now you're going to be quick. You bow an arrow over your boots. Um, this next room is not hard, but not exactly easy. If you can charge a spin attack and get right in the middle, you can actually kill all four of them. It's hard. That was not too bad, though. Or you can try to sort of like aim in the middle and get at least two of them. Pretty good. Um, roll down. Uh, make sure you do not get this red rupee because it's a uh, rupee like you don't need any rupees for the rest of the run, but it wastes time. Anyways, if you need arrows, this pot, make sure you skip the text though. Did I get a blue rupee? I did. So, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna stand, hit one switch, hit the other, and I didn't do that right. You want to try to like creep in as close to the edge as possible, sort of like I am. Because if you're close to the edge, you can just walk straight up and not fall, compared to if you're not close to the edge, and you walk straight up and you fall. That would be embarrassing. Imagine doing that, especially when you're trying to show other people. God, who would do that? Anyways, walk up. There are three ropes here. You can kill them with your sword or with these skulls. Oops. Not giving me a choice here. Anyways, you need three of these, at least, two that go up and two that go side by side, so any three skulls really doesn't matter. And then you're going to fuse going up and down. Like that. Did I do that wrong? No, I did that right. Push. Dispel. You don't need to push uh, this block right here to the left, that's unnecessary. Oops, I'll just do that again, because you would have gone here, dispelled and then start um, charging, so you want your clone to be to the right, it's a bit easier. And you can just go right through the block, and activate the second key. Uh, this one does not have Nezlo trigger, so just hold right and roll. The skulls aren't there, but they are when you fall down, it's interesting. If you need more health, grab these skulls right there. They still hold hearts. But besides that, one, two, one. Um, there are two hearts here and here. If you need them, grab them. But if not, then don't. And you're going to start by heading left. And not getting hit by these guys. Hit this guy. Roll. Roll. Open the door. Um, pretty easy room right here. Roll up. Uh, hit these two eye switches, then switch to your boots and your sword. And you're going to have your second um, Dark Knight fight. You might have called them Armoses earlier. Oops, nice. Not sure. I think I got them right. Anyways. Same strat as before, but this um, for the Dark Knight. Um, for this room, you're going to roll towards the spikes. No, you're gonna roll to the right towards the spikes, roll down towards the switch, roll through the second set of spikes, and keep on going. Hopefully you only get hit twice. If you get hit more than times, then that's fine. Um, five bombs here, a heart here if you need it. If you don't need it, then just skip them. Equip your bombs. Um, you can go for another roll up here if you want. I didn't get it. Dang. Sometimes you can place your bomb far enough that it doesn't hit you, which would save time. Anyways, grab the moments and head on up with the dungeon. This time you're gonna go through the right door with the second key that you had gotten earlier. 
Um, the longer you hold the switch, the longer the bridge is going to stay. So I could stay here for as long as I wanted, the bridge would stay there. And it takes one, two, three, four rolls, or three rolls, and then as, as well text. I did something wrong. I apologize for that, you're supposed to equip the bombs and the arrows um, before you get the moments. Anyways, it's okay, so next extra pause. Next room, um, on the English and Japanese version, these guys take one arrow, or one bomb hit if you really want to risk it. That was pretty good. Um, on the European version, they take two arrows though, just minor detail. Anyways, it activates a miniature portal, but we are not going there yet, because we need another small key. If you go fast enough, you can just make it into these two uh, spiky pillars. Pull, pull, push, 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 push. Now you're going to equip the sword and the moments. Uh, kill these two guys just for ease. Ease, that's a word. I, <laughs> I did that wrong, I apologize. It's been a while. Wait, what? I did that right. That's embarrassing. Pretend that never happened. It's been a while. Anyways, get this small key. Try to make it between these two things. If not, you will take damage, but that's fine. Um, open up this door. Don't do that. You can also sneak into the um, the holes in the ground and you won't take damage from the rolly spikes. Now you go Minish. Also, if you only kill two or like one of the hands and then you exit the scene, there will be three again when you go back to that scene, so make sure, um, that area. So make sure you do kill all three. Um, yeah. Roll here, and you'll get, or you'll grow, hit the switch, and there's going to be a small key that drops. Make sure you don't, um, like, go straight here, because you will hit the, the electric ball thing over here. Waste time. Uh, get the key, become small again, and you'll head over to the next area. So, if you want to kill these guys, you can, but they're pretty easy just to roll through. You really don't need to kill them. Like, even if... <laughs> well then. Don't do that. I just wanted to show an example of what not to do. Oops. Forgot about that. There I can show a second time the switch. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let's let's pretend that I just got out of here. You can roll through these guys. <laughs> you can kill them if you want, you don't need to. Anyways, and you would still have your moments equipped. If you need to kill this guy because you're low on health, you can. If not, just go straight through. It's actually faster to go um, straight through this way and just take the damage than it is to go a bit to the right. Anyways, roll. You can roll past these guys or you can slash them with your sword. And make sure you fall in the hole to the right. I probably mixed up my left from my right like probably 20 times in this tutorial, so I apologize for that. Grab the boss key. This time you will want to get caught by them. And now I can roll through them. Get caught. Go up the stairs if you need hearts. Again, those two skulls right there have hearts. Um, go down. Go down. You don't need that treasure chest. Um, if you're really unsure about this next boss fight, push this. That a portal activates, but you shouldn't need it. Anyways, if you need hearts, here, here, and here. If you need arrows, I believe it's this skull. Nope. That one and that one. But you, if you have more than 10 arrows, you're fine. 
because every time that you hit a hand, it drops arrows. Five arrows to be exact. Anyways, um, so back to the boss. So this is the exact same for the English and Japanese routes. There's no differences. I always start with the left hand. You can do whichever one you want. Or my left. Slash a couple times. Um, if you're playing on the Japanese or European version, remember the um, text for the arrows. But besides that, hit it with your bow. Slash it with your sword. That's pretty much it. So now there are six pillars in this room. Three in front, three in the back. The next time I enter this room, it will not be this pillar, since it was a ton this time, so just keep that in mind. Let's slash it a couple times. I should have saved before this boss, I don't know why I didn't. Let's save right here, we'll just do second cycle and third cycle again. Dang. Um, so if you stand right under where the hand hits, he'll go down. So just the earlier he goes down, the earlier you can hit him. Hit, 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 hit. Okay, so since uh, you're gonna have to equip moments here, since it was on the front right over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right here. There you go. So you can see right here the blue part. That means this is the right post. You don't have to like dig up to in front of it. So that was really good RNG. Equip your bow again. Sometimes the hands don't hit you, I don't know what causes it or what doesn't. I guess just your hitbox is... or its hitbox doesn't touch you for some reason. Anyways, go back, equip your moments. Um, so I'm gonna start up here this time. Wow. <laughs> okay. Let's say that this didn't work, you would just go around and do a circle like this, but I'm really surprised in this RNG. Sometimes this boss can really screw you over. That was really lucky. So let's just do that again. Um, slashing your sword a few times changes the energy, so hopefully it's going to be something different. I'm not sure when exactly. Come on. The it's determined. Also, make sure he doesn't grab you. And if you take too long, um, the head is going to shoot out a beam and it's going to turn you small. And if that happens, just go to one of the portals and. Um, grow again. Yeah, it's not. Okay, now it's one to the left. So last time it was the middle one. So again, equip your bow. And the last phase. Oops, that's unfortunate. If you have 30 arrows at the end of this fight, that's good. Um, but you really don't need that many. Anyways. So it was to the left last time, so it's not in front, it's not on the right. It's at the back, that's fine. The second cycle is the one that matters the most, since you have to actually go in and out with the moments. But once this guy dies, um, he gives you a heart. And you go and you're supposed to go and collect the wind element, but basically the wind tribe just gives you a giant middle finger and they're like, yeah, we moved it. So instead you get the ocarina. It's a pretty cool item. The bird flies you everywhere. Yeah. Um, but that is going to be it for part two, so hope this helps and thanks for watching.